Hi guys, welcome to Code Bashers. So guys, as you all know that Infosys coding preparation series is going on our channel wherein we are discussing the previous year coding questions which were asked in Infosys DSC and SP exam. This exam is really tough and that therefore I made this preparation series wherein you can get to know that what type of questions are getting asked in the exam. Okay, this is the part three of this particular series. Rest of the parts one and two are already uploaded on the channel. You can go and check out the links you can find in the description box. Okay, and guys, also during this during the course of this video, I will also be telling you about how you can prepare for last minute preparation for the Infosys exam. Okay, I will be telling you about the resources which you can download, wherein you will find all the previously asked coding questions of Infosys DSC slash SP exam. So, guys, now let's start this video. Before starting the video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button for this channel. And guys, do join this Telegram group. It's dedicated for 2024 and 2025 best students. Every information about different different companies which are hiring, I'm posting on this group. Okay, all the relevant links you'll find in the description box. Now let's start the video. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button for this channel. Okay, so guys, first of all, I will be discussing the question, then the approach of this question, and finally the coding part of this question. The question here is, which was asked previously in Infosys exam was, given a binary array, return the maximum length of contiguous subarray with an equal number of 0 and 1. See, this question is slightly on the easier level. In exam, you will get total 3 questions. First will be easy, second will be medium, and third will be difficult. So, this, was, this question was slightly on the easier side. So, now what does it mean? In a particular array, you have to find the subarray which contains equal number of 0 and 1 and the length of that subarray should be maximum. So, if we will see the example, you can see here, the first example is this, this is the array. Now, the length of the subarray which contains equal number of 0 and 1 is this only, that is 2. Okay, this is the subarray. So, 0 and 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So, therefore, the answer is 2 here in this case. Next example is, if you will see, this is the array, we need to find a subarray which contains equal number of 0 and 1. So, if you will look closely, this is one of the subarrays which contains 1, 0 and 1, 1. And there is also one again, one subarray which contains 1, 0 and 1, 1. But the length we need to print. So, the maximum length is 2 only in this case. Okay. I hope this is clear to you. The output is 2. Next, again, let's see the next example. So, again, this is the array that is given to us. We need to find a subarray which contains equal number of zeros and 1. So, if you look closely, you will find, okay, this is a two length subarray which contain equal number of 0 and 1. Then, this is a four length subarray which contain equal number of 0 and 1. Two ones are there and two zeros are there. And then there is another, this is also a subarray which contains equal number of 0 and 1. Okay, three ones and three zeros. So, what is the maximum length of the subarray? Maximum length of the subarray is 6 because earlier subarray was 2, earlier subarray was 4, length 4 and now it is 6. So, out of these all the subarrays, what is the maximum length? It is 6. So therefore the answer is 6. I hope now the question is clear to you. It's on the easier side. Now let's quickly move towards the approach of this question. Okay, so guys before moving ahead, I would like you to know that on our top mid page of Code Passion, we have Infosys DSC SP preparation material. In this particular preparation material, we have discussed around 100 plus previously asked question of this exam. See, I have told you many times that this exam contains three coding questions and they are not easy at all. The best way for your last minute preparation is to prepare from the previously asked questions. You can see here we have given two docs, part 1 and part 2, each containing 50 plus previously asked questions in this exam. If I will show you the sample of first doc, you can see here we have given the proper question, proper answers, constraints also and coding part also we have given and explanation of the each and every test case is also given. So, this can be a very good way for your preparation, okay, last minute preparation. You just have two to three days before your exam will be starting, okay. Similarly, for document two also, you can see here, we have the proper question given, input format, output format, and the proper answer is also given. So, in one document, Python related answers are given, and one document, C++ answers are given. But do focus on the logic only, okay. Constraints are very important in this uh, exam, and optimized solutions you will have to give for passing all the test cases. Okay, so if you think this material can help you in your preparation, you can check out the links in the description box and it is at a very nominal price of Rs. 49 because lot of effort have gone in collecting the previous year questions and finding the correct optimal solutions for them and giving you in this doc. Okay, the links you will find in the description box. Now let's continue with the video. Okay, so guys the approach we will be using is a hash map based approach. What we will be doing, we will be taking an variable called current sum initialized with 0 
when we will encounter the current element is zero, then what we'll do? We will subtract minus one from the current sum. Okay, we'll subtract one one from the current sum. And when the current element while iterating the array is not zero, when it is one, so then we will add plus one to the current sum. Okay, it's that simple. And we are taking two variable current sum initialized with zero and max value initialized with zero because there can be multiple sub arrays which can contain equal number of zeros and ones. Therefore, we are taking a variable that is max well which will store the maximum length of the sub array which contains equal number of ones and zeros okay now we will be using the hash map based approach why hash map based approach what i have told you while iterating the array if we are encountering zero we will do current sum minus one if we encounter one we will do current sum plus one so hash map in the hash map the key will be the current sum value will be the first index where that current sum was encountered this thing you will uh, uh, you will get explained once the vi uh, the video proceeds. Okay, initially the hash map is initialized with zero, current sum is zero, and value is minus one. Now what we will do? We will start iterating the array. First index it is zero. So when when it is zero, uh, what we will doing? We will doing current sum minus one. So zero minus one it is minus one. Now after every operation we will check whether the current sum is present in the hash map or not. Is minus one present in the hash map or not? So answer is minus one is not present in the hash map. So we will add minus one in the hash map because key stands for current sum. So minus one we have added in the hash map. Now value means first index. When is the first index where the current sum value was minus one? It was index zero. Okay, it was index zero. So therefore value will be zero here. That is when the current sum was minus one first time. Okay, so this operation is done. Now we'll move towards next element. Now next element is one. What we'll do? We'll do current sum plus one. So minus one plus one, it's become zero. Now see, the current sum has become zero. So is current sum present inside the hash map? Answer is yes. See, this is present inside the hash map. Now guys, see what does this current sum zero denotes here? When we are getting zero, we are doing minus one. Once we are getting one, we are doing plus one. So if our current sum is zero, it means till now in the sub array, till now in the sub array, we have got equal number of zero and one. Therefore, the current sum is zero. So now we will check when this current sum becomes zero or you can see this zero is already present in the hash map. So now we will find the length of the sub array. Now we have found, found out that there exists a sub array which contains equal number of zero and one. How we will find the max value? We will do i minus the first index value okay because zero is already present inside the hash map so what is the value here minus one okay minus one what was the value of i i is one here so one minus minus one is equivalent to this becomes two here so now the max value has become two earlier it was zero so now the max value has become two okay i hope this thing is clear to you now we'll move towards the next index so now again we have encountered one so we have do, done current sum one so is one present inside the hash map? No, it is not present. So we'll add it in the hash map. And what's the index value? Index value is two here. Okay. Now again, we are moving ahead. We are moving ahead. Again, we'll add it here two. So it's current sum two. Is, is, is it present inside the hash map? No, it is not present. So we'll add two here with the index as three. Okay. Index as three. Now again, we'll move ahead. We will add plus one. Now the current sum value becomes three here. So is 3 present inside the hash map? Answer is no. So 3 is not present inside the hash map. So here we will add it. And what's the first index? Index is 4. Now again, similarly, we'll do for this particular operation. We will move this. <coughs> sorry. We will move this one ahead towards the next position. Again, it's 1. Our current sum will become 4. Okay, our current sum will become 4. So 4 is not present inside the hash map. We will add it in the hash map with the first index is 5. Okay next zero is coming so zero current sum minus one will do we will add it three so now current sum is three so is three present is three present inside the hash map yes three is present inside the hash map what's its value its value is four so for calculating the max value now we'll try to calculate the max value here so max value will be i minus in the, the value in the what is the i i is zero one two three four five six so six minus three was already present inside the hash map at 4 so 6 minus 4 is 2 so next value is 2 again so earlier max value was 2 now the max value is 2 so similarly the max value remained 2 only now again we will move towards the next index now next index current sum is 2 here 
okay because we have done minus one so two is present inside the hash tag again we'll try to calculate the max value max value will be i minus this two uh, the value of two that is three so what was i i is seven here okay i is seven here and what's the value of two in the hash map it's four okay it's three so what's four so what's the difference four so earlier max value was two now the max value is four so what is the maximum it is four only so now the max value has become four now again we'll move ahead again we'll do minus one so current sum minus one now it has become one so it is present inside the hash map you can see here yes it is present inside the hash map so now we will again try to calculate the length of the sub array what is the current value of i the current value of i is uh, 8 okay and minus what is the value of 1 inside the hash map 1 inside the hash map is 2 so 8 minus 2 is 6 so out of earlier 4 was their max value now it has 6 so out of 4 and 6 which is maximum 6 is maximum so 6 is the max value now now we will move towards the end of the array so once this entire iteration of the array is done what's the max value max value is 6 here so answer is 6 only so if you will see here here you will find the answer is 6 only i hope now the approach is clear to you it's very simple for every iteration we will check we will do plus 1 or minus 1 and we will continuously check the value of current sum inside the hash map if the value of current sum is there inside the hash map we will simply try to calculate the length of the sub array which contains equal number of 0 and 1 how we will calculate it we will simply do we will simply do i minus i minus value in the hash map value in hash map this is the formula for calculating the maximum value i hope now the approach is clear to you now let's quickly move towards the coding part of this question okay so guys for saving time i have already written the code here you can see here first i'm taking the number of elements inside the array then we are taking every element as input okay then i have told you we are using the hash map based approach i have declared the hash map here initialize the hash map with added zero value okay zero is the current sum value and initialize it with minus one initially then we have taken two variables current sum and max value i have already told you why we have done so then we have started iterating over the array for every uh, for every element we will be checking whether the current element is equivalent to zero or it is equivalent to one if the current element is equivalent to zero what we will be doing we will be doing current sum minus one and if the current value current element is equivalent to one we will be doing current sum plus one okay this is what it is doing once we have done the uh, once we have calculated the current sum then we will be checking whether the current sum exists in the hash map or not okay whether the current sum exists in the hash map or not if it does not exist okay if it exists what will you doing we will be doing nothing we will be now calculating the max value of the sub array okay we will be calculating the max value of the sub array by doing i minus mp of current sum okay the value that we will be getting from here we will compare it with the previous max value and we will simply update the max value from here okay else if the current value is not inside the hash map in that case what we'll doing we'll be adding the value of current sum with the current index okay this for this is what we'll be doing i hope it's clear to you if the value is already there we'll try to calculate the sub array sum which will contain equal number of zeros and one if the value of current sum is not inside the hash map we will add it in the hash map with value as the first index that is the current index okay i hope this thing is clear to you now in the end we'll be simply doing c out max value okay so now let's just quickly run this uh, run this particular test case and it should give us 4 as the answer so you can see 10104 is the answer here sorry this is the syntax mistake okay it should give 4 as the answer okay 4 is coming as output here now if i will do uh, 1011 so it should give us 2 as the output that is this is the sub array 1011 so 2 is coming as the output if I will do all ones inside this, it should give us zero as the output. Let's see what it gives. So yeah, you can see zero as the output because there is no sub array which contains equal number of zeros and one. So this particular code is within the test cases and it will pass all the test cases that will be given to you. The time complexity of this particular solution is big O of n. Okay. So I hope this particular question is clear to you. And if you want to see more such previous year questions, you can always check out on our top mid page of code bashers wherein we have Infosys DSC slash SP preparation material. I have already told you about this in this particular video, wherein we have 100 plus previously asked questions from this exam. And this can be very much beneficial for you for your last minute preparation. Okay. All the relevant links of the Telegram group or of these notes, you will find in the description box. Make sure to check them out. Thank you for watching this video.